I've created so many techniques that constitute the behavioral technology of neurolinguistic programming, and I wanted to make a large number of those available to anyone. Most of my techniques are not that difficult. There are things, and we have little exercises for people to practice, so that you do a little bit every day, and if you do it for two weeks and then repeat it again, and then maybe begin to explore some of those subjects more, you can get yourself headed in the right direction. I was listening to people on talk shows talk about a, a two-week diet to lose weight, and, and, and a two-week diet for this, and a ketone diet, and uh, it's always everything has to be done in two weeks, or 30 days, or 60 days. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if we just had something that you could read and do something for 15, 20 minutes every day, and it got you to be smarter about how you spend your time. Because the currency of life is how you spend the moments of your day. And if you spend your moments remembering some horrible thing that happened, five minutes here, two minutes there, three minutes there, that adds up 30 minutes, an hour a day. An hour a day is 365 hours in a year. In 10 years, it's 3,600. And in 40 years, we're talking north of 10,000, 12,000 hours. You're planning to think about this bad memory. I talk to people about it all the time. And wouldn't it be nice if you could get that time back, the time you spend repetitively thinking. So we give people very short things they can do. Most people have confused remembering with thinking. So they come in and they tell me that I always have to be afraid in a situation or I can never get myself to do this. And it has to do with their thinking that, you know, in the past I've never been able to do something so therefore I won't be able to do it. So whenever they think about it, they have big pictures in their mind and voices and feelings moving in the same direction. When what thinking really is, is reversing all of those processes, putting up new big shiny pictures in their head and talking to themselves in a better voice and spinning their feelings in the opposite direction. Now, depending upon what it is, there's a whole variety of techniques that you get people to do to think instead of remember. Uh, because remembering produces a state called hesitation and thinking leads to action and uh, you know people come in they go it's just that I think this and they're not really thinking they're remembering and when you stop remembering what you can't do and start thinking you can do things uh, people always surprise themselves delightfully most people need a better more precise plan in their mind to become more motivated they need to start feeling better each thing they get done rather than worse about how much they haven't. And a lot of it just has to do with where the pictures are in your head, how big they are and what's in them, and how it affects your entemic nervous system. What psychologists uh, call uh, feelings is that there are cortical connections between all the hollow and solid organs in your intestines that go right up the brain stem and connect with the rest of your brain. There's an overlap between your visual and auditory cortex and all these things connect in a way where you feel knots in your stomach and rotating and all these uh, sensations that, you know, people go, my heart is beating, how can I make it stop? And I don't think they really want the answer to that question. It's not about stopping something once it starts, it's about conditioning yourself to make these things work towards you. When people feel hesitant, their feelings are going one way, and when they feel motivated, they're going the other way. Everybody who tells me they can't get motivated goes out and does other stuff, which means they can be motivated. Uh, everybody who tells me they have insecurity, I always look at them and go, are you sure about it? And they go, yes. Um, so it's not true that they're not capable of certainty, they're just aiming it in the wrong direction. People who are not motivated are doing other things and they need to push this stuff around in their mind so they start getting this stuff done that they want to do so they feel good about themselves. All of these things are connected you're asking about. They're all connected in a way that when you reorganize your mind you become more efficient and more adaptable as an organism. If you give yourself a purpose and a mission and you keep realigning that mission so that you're adaptable to your environment, your family, your friends, your jobs, you become successful as a person and will feel great. Uh, the more you just whine and whinge about it and sit around and hallucinate yourself failing, uh, the more you'll be wasting time. 
and uh, you know, I know that there are psychologists that say you should accept yourself, but I think that's selling yourself short. I think you can be much more than you ever suspected. I don't think that people have difficulty planning. I think that they just plan the wrong things. People plan to not get anything done. They think, you know, they go, what should I do today? And they make a list of stuff and they go, well, I'm probably just going to sit around and do nothing. And they sit around and do nothing excellently. And there's these pictures in their head they follow and these they don't follow and they need to reverse them. Uh, they need to become compelled. Uh, one of the things about successful people is that, is that they're, a, they're a little OCD about getting things done and primarily because it feels good. Uh, you take somebody that doesn't clean up their closet, they open the closet and they look in and they go, gosh, I really should clean this mess up. And then they think, but, you know, I could do this and I could do this and I could do this and next thing you know they find themselves doing something else. It's because they don't really make it a plan, they don't make a commitment to themselves and to other people and they don't look at it and the first thing they take out feel better. When they take two out, feel even better still. And I teach people how to control their thoughts and their mind in a way where they get control of their brain. A lot of people say they're afraid to be hypnotized because they don't want anybody controlling them. When the truth is, the way I use hypnosis is to teach them so they can control their own thoughts. I'm teaching them the very mechanisms that will probably for the first time in their life put them in control of not just the way they feel, the way they think, and therefore what they can do. Personal power is knowing what you do well and what you don't do well, which is where people get into trouble. See, if you know what you do well and you don't do well, then you should know what to do next to become a better person. And as long as you're better than you were yesterday and a week ago and a month ago, you're headed in the right direction. But if that ain't happening, because I think people are either getting better or they're getting worse. And they're either getting smarter or they're getting dumber. And that pretty much happens every day. And we all go a little bit this way and a little bit this way. I want to go a lot that way and as little this way as I can. Making the same mistake is not a good idea. And most theories justify making the same mistake. And you know, that, you know, that change should be long and tedious justifies not doing a good job for a long time. And, you know, I didn't accept any of the theories of personality and psychology or any of that. I thought, you know, we need to get, you know, my criterion, does it work? Does it work? And how quickly? And I assumed that everything is a possibility and can be done. Uh, it seems like the practical way to live and to believe. And if you believe in yourself, you just need to believe you can do it. You just have to learn the right things. Then you'll start looking for the right things. If you believe you're not a good person, you do not try with every fiber of your soul. And both of those are just ideas and you can change ideas like you change socks. We have more evidence that placebos work as well as a lot of drugs. And with my athletes, uh, especially back in the 70s and the 80s, a lot of them were on steroids. I mean, intense anabolic steroids. And they believed they couldn't hit the ball as well without it. And while they do make your muscles stronger, so will exercise and eating right and taking the right minerals. And uh, I started giving them placebos. Uh, and then I found out, you know, you can make vitamins into placebos. And, you know, I had them taking multi-minerals and believing that they would replace their steroids and be even better. And some of them ended up doing better than they did with the steroids. What's important is, is not that you deceive yourself with a placebo, but that you realize the power of belief. Even when people take real medicine, they need to believe it's going to work. And, you know, that's what gets somebody to take all the antibiotics in the bottle, is believing if you take all 12, you'll be better.